today. Uh, one of the moderators on the team here at uh, Philosophical Plebeians. Um, she has a bachelor's, I believe, or or the equivalent of a bachelor's in America uh, in physics. Is that it? Or yeah, that's right. I went to Ottawa U for a physics math honors degree, which was a four year degree. Okay, and then we have Quantum Bohm here, who is basically uh, next in line. Uh, you know, trusted admin here at Philosophical Plebeians, and uh, he essentially is taking the anti realist position here in regards to ethics and values. He's a moral anti-realist, I believe. And yeah. he's a bachelor's in uh, aer aerospace craft engineering. Yeah, aerospace engineering. Yep. Aerospace engineering, yeah. Um, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by letting the moral realist um, or, you know what, I'll let you start off on because Jen said that she, she mainly wanted to uh, respond to what's being said here. I guess I'll let you open up and we'll hear what you have to say and then we'll move to just general discussion and then after this we'll have questions from the audience come in. Um, but yeah, go ahead, Quantum. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so basically I'm taking the idea of moral realism to be this um, the thesis that there are um, true moral uh, facts that are uh, stance independent or sometimes mind independent. Um, what this is going to basically mean a, a moral fact or some type of moral proposition is usually going to be something of the form um, S ought S X. <clears throat> That's a mouthful, but it, it's so S is usually a, a shorthand for a subject or a person. Uh, it's an index, indexical term, I guess. Uh, so if there is a true uh, proposition that takes the form S ought X, where X is like some action or decision that they should make, um, and that that the, that property that that proposition um, is true, uh, depend independent of all stances. So stances are going to be things like um, the particular beliefs and desires of a person or subject or mind um so so one of the things that um well maybe we can get into it a little further from there but yeah so so a, mo a moral fact is just taken to be a, a normative uh, statement so it involves uh, an ought um or a should right um and you know uh if you if you look at the 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 common uh, way that the dialectic is framed by um, by Kant is uh, between hypothetical and categorical norms. So hypothetical norms are these norms that are um, conditional on the sort of aims of a person or a group. Um, so you, you might say, like, if your goal is to um, not dehydrate, right, then you should drink water. Those are going to be sort of hypothetical norms, or sometimes called imperatives. Um, it, it's usually an imperative if it's more of the form like "you must," um, or this is like the only way to achieve the same. Um, but basically, uh, an anti-realist can sort of accept that there are these hypothetical norms that are the whether or not they they it, whether or not the the norm, which is that you ought do something. Uh, whether that holds is going to depend on the particular stance of the person or, or group, which is the the aim, right? The aim is part of their stance. Uh, it could be the case that they don't have that aim. Um, so uh, a realist wants to say that there are categorical norms, which are norms that don't have any reference to uh, an aim or uh, a desire, right? Um, it would just be a, a statement of the form that you know, um, you know, maybe all all subjects should do X, um, and it's not going to have reference to. There's not going to be a conditional reference made. It, they're not going to be saying if they agree that they want this thing or that they are aiming towards this thing, then they should do this. It's just going to be they should do this. That's going to be a categorical norm. So uh, basically, an uh, anti-realist says that those sort of norms don't exist. Um, 
that's the basic uh, gist of the position, I guess. Uh, but I don't know if Jen has like thoughts about it, but yeah. Okay. Um, I guess that we'll go to uh, the moral realist stance with Jen here. And uh, again, after this, we'll just go to general discussion and then open the audience up for questions and maybe invite some people on here to share their thoughts with uh, the damn, sorry, I, the debate participants. Jesus, I can't talk today. <laughs> so, Jen, we're going to move to you. Do you have any opening thoughts or do you have anything that you want to contest with? Thanks, Nirvana. Great to be here, and thanks, Quantum, for participating in this uh, hopefully fruitful debate. I think it's a great uh, question to scratch the surface and hopefully dive deep on uh, a lot of subtleties that can bubble up when we have these kinds of discussions. So, to me, moral realism is uh, basically boils down to are there universal oughts, or what they call um, stance-independent oughts. I understand morality as, I do think it's, it's consistent with that, but slightly different. So I'll just say that I justify morality's existence by positing that there are universally desirable states of being. And the way I define that is by saying that if one of these states were induced in a subject, would they then agree that they wanted arbitrary access to that state. So not to be crass, but orgasm sort of pops to mind for if people have never had any experiences with like meditative states as a state that pretty much, I don't know too many people who would argue against the desirability of the orgasm state as a perhaps secularized example of what I'm kind of trying to aim at, but which language often falls short of. I guess I looked at the arguments that were posted in the general and I was looking forward to going through them and seeing whether they were sound because I had some questions and comments about all of them and uh, maybe we can proceed in that direction. I don't know how much more I can really try to justify objective morality in a monologue but Maybe just say real quick, what if morality doesn't have, if there is no such thing as objective morality, what are religions talking about? So I guess I would start with uh, the beginning assumption of my argument, which is that there is such a thing as a universally desirable state of being or multiple of those states, and I would ask you if you would agree or be inclined to agree with that uh, proposition. Um, can you repeat the very last line again? I'm sorry. I just want to be really clear that I'm not saying there's one state that's the supreme state. I'm saying there are universally preferable, or sorry, I want to use the word desirable, states of uh, being. Mm -hmm. I mean, by that, do you mean that, I mean, when you say desirable, um, is that, is that like modal is there, or is that just like that they are so this, desired? This is what I, this is how I define it is if that state were induced, i.e. brought on spontaneously for the subject, they would then agree that they wanted to have arbitrary access to it going forward. And the example I gave was an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Do you want arbitrary access to that going forward? Okay. So, like, universally preferred. Right. I was, I said preferred at first, but I would rather use desirable. Because preferred mm -hmm. implies that there's a knowability there. And that's another thing I wanted to get into, maybe not right away, but a lot of your worldview seems to sort of center on reasons and knowability. And, uh, okay. So it's sort of like a counterfactual of, like, if they had like translucent epistemic access right they, if they knew everything about it then in that position they would um desire it would you agree with that proposition um no uh i think like there are sort of like uh so, so i could see it being sort of true for a class 
of uh, subjects, right, for a class of like possible minds that they would all have that reaction in that situation. Um, but I wouldn't think that's universally true, right? Because I would think that you could have a subject who, who you know, the experience for them is the same, but they just have a different desire. I don't see what holds the desire fixed. I said that there exist states. I'm not even saying orgasm is an example of one of those states. I'm saying it's like one of those states. I'm asking basically, do you believe in a state of mind that everybody would agree if they could experience it, that it was desirable? Right. So so that I don't think so, because I think when you say everybody, you, you got to be including. I mean, if you mean everybody who actually exists or do you mean every every possible person? Um, well, I'm, I guess I'm talking about what we could verify experientially with data. I would just think that there's like a possible person, right, who could who could have uh, desire the opposite of anything you could kind of come up with like that. You know, if it, whatever, if you're holding the thing fixed, uh, and you say, you know, is it possible for somebody? to have the the reverse desire that most of us have towards this uh, i would say prob i would say yes like i don't see a reason why not right because of something called least action principle that basically means someone was wired opposite everybody else but that aside what i think is that if you're going to believe in objective morality you it pretty much follows from believing that there are universally positively valenced uh, conscious qualio or states of mind yeah, I mean, I think um, I think it's it's possible you could make a sort of like empirical argument that um, like it's a it's a it's universal insofar as we can tell, and sort of like extrapolate from there, you know. But uh, when you say like wired that way and things like this, it's like yeah, through like the evolutionary processes that we developed through, right? Um, but I think like in the in the conceptual space. Uh, you know, you could come up with ways that things could develop differently. Um, and I would just think that, you know, when I'm thinking about these, like, sort of statements as universals, that it would include, you know, um, atypical cases that aren't, like, in the empirical, like, data that we Are have. Are you talking but... about S5 modal logic, where if something is conceivable, then it's necessary in some world? No, no, not not that. I just think that uh, if the possibility is there that, like, in, you know, in a thought experiment sort of sense that I could come up with a counterexample, then, like, the rule... So th so if, I'm, if we're saying, like, an orgasm or whatever is something that when anybody is fully introduced to it, that they will, they will want that, right? Um, like, I don't see how we could infer... So, I mean, take that case, but then take a case of something, like, more mundane, too, right? Let's say you like um, jogging, right, or yoga, right? And then somebody else doesn't. Um, I don't see what the difference is between the two cases where you're going to say, for this one, everybody will have the same reaction to it, or everybody will have the same, like, states of desire towards this. Well, you're basically we saying that's all the difference between yoga and jogging. Tell the difference? Wait, is that what you said? Just sounds like you're saying that you can't tell the difference between yoga and jogging? Well, perhaps, like, in terms of values that people have towards them, um, you know, it doesn't mean they can't tell the difference, but when you make an evaluation of things, like, say, like, would I rather go to, you know, uh, see this movie or go and play mini golf, right? Like, let's say I have, like, I'm roughly as apathetic towards either decision here or something like that, right? My, my like, it's like I'm kind of torn because I can't really make a, a... So it's not that you can't tell the difference between what they are. It's just that your evaluation of them is sort of in balance, right? Uh, but is well, if, if we're... Yeah, I could just say I didn't actually get to my definition of morality yet. Um, oh, I sorry. basically said that if we can't agree at this point, th then you will necessarily not agree with my definition of morality, so it doesn't make sense to progress to the definition. At least okay. maybe not now, just because 
I disagree more. If, like basically I had the convo mapped out and I didn't think I could get you to agree on the univalent states. So I was going to proceed to ask what could we agree on? Mm. Um, so I think if, there's you nowhere, if you don't know where to go, if you don't know where to go with that, I would have a follow up, which is how do you account for human cooperation? But if you want to just focus on what we could agree on, please feel free. I just thought it might be too vague. No, I think uh, I think the idea too is that like I don't really equate universal uh, universalism about like ethics uh, with ob objective morality or like moral realism because I think like um, you you could sort of reject universalism and still be a realist. I don't know too many cases of people doing that, but I would say that there aren't any like strict rules or moral principles that guide like human ethics um and so like i would say i'm a particularist which means that sort of uh like what informs ethical decisions are like the particulars of like each case and you have to go case by case and you can never say you can never make uh universal statements like that that are going to hold across all cases well, doesn't particularism become the universal statement at that point? I mean, I don't think so, because it's not really, it's it's sort of meta-normative. It's not really a normative statement in itself. It's like higher order, like, uh, say you have a belief about a belief, right? You you say, like, say, say you have some weird belief that you're like a tree, right? And then you have a higher order belief that is like the belief that you believe you are a tree, right? Um, Can we just back up a minute, please, before this gets too hard yeah, for me to conceive of? You know, I'm just, just saying just, that it's not a mean? universal. When you say that, like, um, when you say that uh, there are no true universal um, moral principles, that's not a that's not a moral principle, right? It's about a moral principle, so it's like. Me at a normative, right? So if the thing is in the sentence, the uh, meta, the thing? Well, it's like referencing moral, it's like, it's referencing like the set of like how, how like propositions towards ethics um, can be characterized broadly, right? But well, it's not case, itself a statement of the form like you should X or whatever. Yes, but you were talking about universals, remember? So universals are form, not syntax. But anyway, morality versus ethics, what is the difference? Um, I mean, that's kind of, I don't know, that's sort of just like a... I, I've heard people use them somewhat interchangeably at times. Um, I mean, I, I tend to think when I use the term ethics specifically, sometimes that's used as a very broad overarching term. Um, but I usually am thinking of applied ethics, um, which is going to involve like um, normative ethics as well. Ethics and, and morality are like closely related terms. I don't think there's like a specific delineation between them. But so you do or don't believe in in like societal norms. Societal norms. Um, Sure. Yeah, there are societal norms. So you believe in societal norms, but not well, moral ethics. Like that societies have norms? Yes. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah, obviously. Is there a connection between the norms of society and morality? Um, well, some of them are, some of them could be moral uh, norms that the society develops, right? That um, but that, but that's sort of the same as like an individual person having moral norms, right? Because I, I would say that I'm a subjectivist, which I don't think I have an issue saying that people have moral norms that they abide and like believe in and stuff like that. I just don't think that any of them are like true independent of stances, right? That was like the the critical part of it. Yeah, I guess we could go through your longer argument yeah the second yeah, one you that. posted 
Did you want to read it or I can read it? It's uh... Uh, you can read it if you want. You have a better like radio voice than I do. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, so one is if moral, mor moral norms can be epistemically opaque, then they can fail to provide reasons for actions to all subjects. And we have a defense, which is if S doesn't not know moral norm Q, then Q imparts no motivational force for S to perform action X associated with Q. Thus, Q does not provide S for S a reason to perform X. Yeah, so I guess if we, yeah, I could try to explain this a little bit. So it's, uh, so the idea is that, um, I mean, there's a premise later on, because I actually did this argument a few times. So it's actually, let's see, premise three. Um, the motivation of this argument is basically that um, a moral norm, like, uh, so say it's like uh, S ought X. Um, the idea is that that's supposed to be constituted partially in the concept by the uh, the concept of uh, reason givingness, I guess, which is basically just it. It's the PSR, right? No, uh, it's not exactly the same thing. It's it's saying that uh, if S ought X is true, then it's true that S has reason to X. Does that make sense? So the truth of a statement implies that there's reasons for it. Yeah, it implies that the subject has reason to act in the way, like, in accord with that norm. So it's part of, like... Self-justified by their, quote-unquote, truth. Got it? It's just supposed to be constitutive. So when, it, when we say, like, constitutive, right, it means, like, when you say S ought X, uh, part of the meaning that you're conveying by saying that is constituted by also the meaning that um, they have reason to do X, right? Um, now, I guess you could reject this, but I think that that's a fairly common view. I'm just thinking, like, if you're going to have access to reasons, and access to beliefs, then it sort of becomes, well, what don't we have access to about our cognitive processes? Yeah, so I guess um, another illustration I could give if we want to talk about, um, you could take, like, a, any, like, sort of, moral dilemma that you want because like the specific one that you pick isn't isn't like the important bit like if you want to do like to, if you take the trolley problem and you ask is there some objective moral norm that tells me what the right answer is right um the idea is that if that if that norm is epistemically opaque to me and i, I don't know what it is right then it has no influence on my decision, right? But yet, a realist wants to say that it, it provides a reason, like it means like if the idea is that you should pull the lever, right, then the idea is that if it's true I should pull the lever, then that's supposed to give me reason to pull the lever, even if I don't know what it is, right? Well, what's, like, it just sounds like that's a description of subconscious impulses, but it seems like you're saying you have to know something for it to be a reason. Well, let's say I ask you, like, what's the reason why you believe something, right? Like, take. Are you saying that? Know. Are you saying that though? Am I saying what? To me, it sounds like you're saying you have to know something for it to be a reason. I'm asking, is that a fair representation of your view? Uh, it depends on the sense, right? So. In this sense, if they mean something else by it gives you a reason, then I'd have to know what that what that means a little bit, right? Like, um, so if it, if it if they mean it in a sense, which it does seem like a lot of people do, that by saying like that s ought x, therefore s has reason to x, right? For for me, that would that would entail something to do with motivation, right? Um, which is going to depend on the stance, right? Um, motivation is going to depend on stance. Yeah, like it's going to be stance dependent because whether or not um, 
Well, I don't know if I would agree with that. I still just really want to know, do you have to know something for it to, can there be unknown reasons for things? Because to me, that's the reasonable well, presumption. I guess, I, guess like, I start with that presumption that everything is unknown except for a very tiny amount in my, you know, Cogito or whatever. Yeah, so like to clarify a little bit too, I guess, um, uh, what I'm what I'm saying is that it's it's part of the stance. The state of knowledge is part of their stance, right? And their beliefs and desires inform their um, behavior, right? Let's say, does that make sense? Well, it makes sense, but then I know that when you say belief, you mean something someone has rational access to. So it just always is going to come back to well, me. For me, it's I, I wouldn't even. To, how do we point to the thing we don't presume we have rational access to? Because that's the majority of the cognitive processing. Well, well, okay. So to take a step back, I guess uh, the belief thing. I, I don't. I don't know. Rational access is probably not something I would use. I think ra like. I think you have access to your beliefs, right? In in the sense that you're aware of them, you want to or believe at that. Least some you of them. You want to believe that. Because you want to be able to dictate norms. I get that everyone no. wants to do that. Or are you no, 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 I don't want to do. I, I, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm. What, hmm. uh, well, okay. In the sense that if somebody knows something or doesn't know something, if if it's possible for them not to know it, right? Then whether or not they know it is uh, part of their stance. Well, it's, right. it's just so more specific can... than that. It's, is it possible not to know your reasons for something? Well, well, this is this is the thing, right? Is that if you don't if you don't know the reason, um, it doesn't seem to be motivating your behavior in any direction, right? That didn't uh, make any sense to me, unfortunately. I don't know what so, so you mean. Let's say you... Hmm. It, okay. Do you, do you think everybody makes the same sort of, like, decision when faced with the, the trolley problem, right? I feel like people kind of disagree. Like I they think make the a different problems that try decision. to ground morality in materialism are framed incorrectly. It's basically designing it so that it can't be correct, so that it's unanswerable. Is it like what you said, the particulars? I also agree that particulars are determinative to morality. I don't think that yeah. means that there aren't stance independent facts. Okay, so just, like, can you get, so what's an example, thing. what's an example of one for you? I only have one moral principle, it's um, harm minimization. Okay, so it's and like ha which, harm should be minimized. Yeah, and the okay. way in which uh, it's particularized is that every situation could have had like optimum uh, embodiment of that principle, and then there's gradations mm -hmm. of not quite embodying it as much. And then you. Can so what I want to understand though, going against it, you're evil. So when you conceive of like harm, right? Um, I guess the idea would be the best way to illustrate this would just be to say like if you had the same like situations ha happening to different people, um, you might say that you know the exact same thing happening to one person harms them, whereas like happening to somebody else, uh, it could be enjoyable, right? Like depending on what we're talking about. Like I don't, you know. Presumably, there are some cases of this, right? Where, like, a thing would harm actually harm... Mind is univalent, the undesirable. So, to try to play a definition game is to sort right. of... No, no, no. So the, the, the definition takes that into account. Right. So then, so, but then when it's... When you say that, though, it starts to seem to me like it's just a um, tautology, right? And now you have to establish... How math isn't a tautology, and therefore, Why does if that it is matter? a tautology, how can we say that it's still useful? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't really, I don't think it matters that much on 
with respect to this question, right? So it doesn't matter if math is tautological, but it matters that ahimsa is tautological? Um, yeah. I guess for me, if you're like, saying something tautological, Because it's I'm a debate about morality. <laughs> well, I'm saying something I mean, tautological could, is actually a good thing. I don't think that... I mean... I guess it depends on what you mean by calling math a tautology, too. I don't really want to get into a discussion. I know you don't want to go into philosophy of math with me, but is math falsifiable or is it always true? I think it's just like a concept. Always true. Exactly. It's designed conceptually to be always true. That's why we love it so much. But I think the issue, though, is that when you're trying to talk about like whether harm is like some universally thing we should minimize right like and then you and then you define harm in terms of the subjective stances right then it just seems to me to either go back to my view or like to be um like uh like you haven't answered the question kind of thing well your view and my view might actually be closer than you think which is why i had wanted to go through this like points one to six Argument, which to me sort of seems to reduce to the question of, well, is there something objective about individual stances? Um, so is there something objective uh, about subjectivity? And I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, it's the principle of consciousness. Sort of. Well, I, I would agree with you in some sense that, you know, uh, subjects are sort of like a s- subclass of uh, objects. Like, but that's obviously controversial and stuff. But the thing is, though, is that, like, so it's take something like opinions, right? Like, uh, which are sort of like, okay, these are like paradigmatically like little subjective things. Like, we all kind of think opinions are subjective, right? Um, so it, if we say, like, there's an objective fact about, you know, the opinions that somebody has towards, like, pizza or movies, right? Uh, that's not a problem, right? We could say, like, it's just a fact that, like, this person's opinion is this, right? Uh, but I don't think that's the same. This way. Put it to you this way. We're not really talking about anything outside the class of humans. Um, and so we have to answer the question, is subjectivity objective? And I think it's a bit of a fool's errand to think we could answer that precisely, but we sort of have to think about what's reasonable as a presumption, like... Well, what I think there's sort of like experience is quote objectively, i.e., signals processingly of the same kind. The fact that we can all understand each other through language, the point that we can, what does that say? Well, there's something shared. Therefore, mm-hmm. it would be reasonable to presume there was some element of objectivity in subjectivity. So I do think there's reasonable? some. There's yeah. I mean, to an extent, like I think it, you could say. Uh, if the if the line is just drawn about like well uh, which things are sort of like dependent on my particular mind right are going to be like my thoughts and beliefs etc versus like what are the things that are dependent on somebody else's mind and that that's going to be like their thoughts and beliefs and desires um, versus what in general types of things are dependent on minds in general right so those are like going to be different questions that are going to have slightly different answers to them so like when you consider um, whether or not is your mind independent of my mind? Like, could you exist if I didn't exist? Yes. Right. So then is your mind like quote unquote mind independent with, with, with respect sorry, to my no, mind? We're not talking yes. about the same thing. We're not talking about the same thing. Does that make sense though? Or I know I, I, not really because I don't believe in individual minds. Remember? Mind is an yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't think this is like ultimate metaphysics stuff. <laughs> I think this is just, your entire uh, argument is predicated on multiple minds existing and speculating about their dependence relations and the opinions that are. Well, no, I think these are just like it does. It does matter. But these are just concepts that I think, like, um, in most cases, like, like we intuit. But at the same time, it doesn't matter whether or not, like, you, you if if you think it's conceptually like flawed, then and you think intuitions are justified. All and right, I don't. all right, all right, everybody. Um, I'm going to pause for a second because I actually uh, have a question from Franks that I'm going to uh, ask real quick. Uh, Franks wants to know, are there any moral facts that are universal for Sully? Uh, no. Yeah, I, di- I didn't think so because, I mean, obviously, but... Um, no, because... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to ask uh, both of you, what are your thoughts on, on error theory? 
Yeah, I think like I think the view that I have is sort of compatible with error theory, but I don't really call myself an error theorist because I mean I just want to say that moral facts are indexed to subjects. So um you know S bot X can be indexed particularly to one subject, right? Like like with the hypothetical norms that we were talking about at the beginning, right? Uh, so error theory is just saying that all the all the categorical normative statements are false, which I agree with. So Yeah, another thing about uh like Frank's question is like uh, an example he used later on was like he would assume that like murder would be wrong in all cases, but like it's not necessarily the the thing that's in question is not necessarily like the act of murder as more so as just like the act of killing because we've we've you know created murder as a law to prevent unlawful killing, um, you know. But like what's what's that question really is more so like the killing itself. Like is killing is more interesting to talk about in my opinion. That's just me adding on. But we, we can go back to discussion if you guys don't have any thoughts on that. Or... Um, yeah, I mean, like, I think killing is, is, is immoral in some cases, probably, right? Like, that's my view on it. Uh, I think in other cases, it can be what it can be the thing you should do. Um, if we're not, when people say murder, that has, that always carries the connotation of being immoral. So it's cases of killing that are immoral moral but i mean most people are okay with self-defense um and things like that so defense yeah. of other people jen what do you think about that do you think that that killing is immoral in all cases or do you think it's case by case like sully's saying well, we didn't quite get to my definition of morality but uh the best word to get a primary intuition would be reciprocity so Killing is moral, you know, as often as you'd want to be killed. So, uh, in regards to uh, some more definitions, I guess, or some more labels for uh, things that I've heard people come up with, is that Tom, you know, T-Jump, uses the word involuntary imposition of will to define, like, what's immoral. And therefore, like, in certain instances, he considers killing, in self-defense specifically, a justified immoral action. What would you think about that? What would you think about that in particular, Quantum? Uh, justified immoral. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. So, like, this idea that, like, it always has a negative valence to it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really buy that. Um, like, I, I don't even privilege, like, in the sense that Tom does, like, the idea that, like, oh, you can't, like, impose your will on somebody. Well, I mean, you know, most of what we're interested in when it comes to morality is uh, when th when people are going to do something that uh, they're not going to, like, they're not going to be convinced away from doing, right? Like, something, like, I don't know, just just some horrible, horrible thing, right? Somebody wants to start a war, like, or, you know do an attack somewhere right uh, on innocent people um the thing is is that you know in those cases i don't think you're doing something wrong by uh if that's the only thing that you that you have that you can do to stop them right if you're going to kill somebody like i don't think it's immoral at all uh in my view <laughs> you know because i think it's the thing you should do right so it's like it's going to be cashed out normatively so it's going to be should you do it or not right uh and if the answer is yes then i don't see why that's immoral view to do it um i don't think there's this like higher like perspective on the situation that tells you no that was actually still bad <laughs> you know so do you do you not view it as like for instance um the act of killing existing separate from what is giving you the inclination to kill somebody? Do you not view that as something that would exist separate from like, like for instance, like, just like, yeah, go ahead. No, I was saying like, like for instance, like, like the idea of me killing somebody, like, like just, just existing separate from like the inclination of like, why I feel like I need to kill somebody. Do you not view that? Like there's somewhat of a separation between those two things. 
I mean, like in a vacuum, like with nothing, like sort of contextualizing it, just the idea of killing, like isolated. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I'm not even asking you to like take a moral stance on those things. I'm just saying, like, well, I would just you say, mean? like, if you isolate it that heavily, then you can't say whether or not you should do it or not. Like, so yeah, that's why that's why I take the particularist view is that like you have to fill in the details a little bit, you know. Yeah, I, can I ask the question about uh, error theory. Yep, go yep. ahead, and you guys well, can I go back wanna... to uh, open discussion after that. Thanks, Ron. I just want to make sure that it's a, um, an error theory of ethics is the view that the ordinary user of moral language is typically making claims that involve a mistake. Is that correct? Uh, basically, yeah. Uh, I would agree with be... that. Yeah, because there's no uh, reason to think that any claims would be correct without a significant amount of self-inquiry. And I made this diagram was actually inspired by that uh, combo that about whether beliefs are knowable on the friction server there. I think what makes it really hard to fathom is that beliefs are logical. We just don't have access, we don't have rational access to them. So yeah. I think I think partially function in a way. Let me just finish here. If we have a fun, wait, yeah, uh, things that are inside us that function the same way math does, we don't have access to. It makes sense that we would just assume we had access to them because it feels like other stuff that we understand. I guess. And yeah, that's all I want to say. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I think part of the issue too is that um, you know sometimes in a certain situation where I'm, uh, I was going to debate order right originally. So uh, like there's there's some common like academic philosophy stuff about moral realism and, and these sort of topics um that if you have a different view on things like belief and like general epistemology and, and things like if you if you differ from like the philosophers who call themselves moral realists significantly enough but you just like the term or you know you still want to call yourself that um that's fine, and like a lot of the critiques that I have towards it might not land on that. So, um, yeah, like there's nothing wrong with that either. Like if you if you like want to call yourself a more realist and like represent that as a different position than what's commonly talked about, like or at least in the circle of you know academic philosophy that I've been exposed to, right? Uh, yeah, it could be that none of the stuff that I have against that view apply to you, right? Um, yeah, that's why I was saying our views might be more similar than you thought, because I kind of think there is moral truth, but that it isn't accessible in language. I don't know if yeah, that view is something um, that would be almost like mysterious view or something. I don't know what so, you call that. Like, what is it, what is it about, so do you think, like, if we're talking about the, the trolley problem or whatever, right? I mean, maybe you want to say that those are, well... I mean, let's just say it's a more like realistic case, right? Like, let's just underspecify the hell out of it. But let's say like you're in a situation in real life that has like some like moral weight to it, right? Uh, do you think that there are actually like facts of the matter about what you should do in that situation that are like outside of you? I just find the entire phrasing extremely. Uh extremely confusing like for me it's about whether something could have been better i'm trying to minimize the amount of could have been betterness if that mm. kind of makes sense and my understanding of could have been betterness is evolving the morality is just a question of how much one kind of realizes that so are you measuring like the the better there by like what how people feel about the situation though cuz i it's ahimsa it's how much ahimsa is manifested so there's like different levels of it like happiness is that that's not really a sign of ahimsa because okay. happiness can cause more problems it's more about uh correctly Are... aligning beliefs the suffering okay, so, comes from incorrectly aligned beliefs. And there's mm -hmm. a correcting of alignment of beliefs, and that's like, hey. 
at least to me, mm-hmm. obviously I'm not every situation I'm going into thinking, oh, can I recreate, can I like recalibrate people's beliefs? I'm not thinking that for me, it's just, can I, it's cheesy, but it's just like, be the best you can be given the hmm. situation. And I feel like every situation has a set of facts about it that determine relative to other manifestation of those same sets of physical facts, like whether kind of see what I'm saying. Like it could have been better because of this. I could have had a blowjob, but or I could have had a blowjob in a state like that kind of thing with morality. Yeah. I guess for me, it's hard to see like who, well, who, who decides like what's better. Right. Uh, even if say you just step back and you, you're, it's the, you know, you're considering like how much total harmony there is in the world. Right. It's consciousness that decides. Yeah. Right. It would have to be like mental property, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my so the material properties are emergent from the mental properties. Right. So the, the questions that um, ground morality and materiality are just unanswerable for that reason. So, like, but what's to say? So, I have another argument that I posted at some point. I don't know if it's still there, but uh, just the idea that, you know, we don't actually need to posit all of that to be like to like really instantiate all of that to explain like our like our experiences with morality right like the way we feel about it right we don't that may be true but are we just here to explain or are we here to improve morality i mean if you so so i i would say this if, if you have like independent reasons for thinking that your metaphysical views are are right and that that comes along with this sort of stuff that explains morality as well. So if it's like an independently motivated idea, then taken separately from the idea of like whether or not, um, uh, you know, thinking that these properties like that we, or thinking that these uh, experiences of morality that we have need to be explained by something that's like uh, externally grounded in like the universe or something like that. Um, It just seems like more extravagant to me if you were going from one to the other, it's like an inference, but I understand that's not really what you're doing. The three-parter, which is moral realism is ontologically profligate and not required to explain yes. strong moral intuitions and other moral data. Yeah. That would then turn the conversation into grounding theoretical virtue, which is extremely, extremely hard to do. Unless you already agree on the grounding principle. Right. Right. We could talk about well, grounding yeah. principles and what makes them virtuous, but I think at that point we're not in morality anymore. Yeah. To me, morality is just a highly emotional variant of knowledge. But I do like this yeah. phrasing because this type of argument, sort of just the shape of it, is great because we should be thinking about that. Yeah, uh, that's the point of morality is explanation. It's guidance. How do I get to those uh, univalent guidance? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it may provide some satisfaction that one can say, "I understand." I have an explanation. There's a satisfaction of that, but that won't suffice for most people. I think. Yeah, and I think you would also admit that, like the way that you're viewing moral truths. you don't think that like i mean did, would this inform you of like what to do in the trolley problem or like a situation for me, like the that trolley in... problem is for me the trolley problem is definitionally unanswerable because morality well, is, is mental not material and the trolley problem is material so there's not enough information okay. i would need to be able to calculate which one caused less suffering and yeah, i, I can like, never uh, do that that's thing i can never do that i can just get better models i just always get better models so it's like I mean, I'm not if gonna you apply assume... my models to this disgusting example that is asking commoners to preside over what amounts to an execution. I mean, that's cruelty. And if you're cruel, you're making it harder to be moral. So that's count. And to me, all knowledge comes from himsa, which is, I think you agree, a moral principle. Sure, but like, okay, but I mean, surely, like, there are cases of this sort of not the exact thing happening, but like, you know, um, you have to make a decision between like your 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 hand is forced right and you have to make a decision and both both elements of it are going to be like you know maybe harmful 
to people like say your car is out of control right and you know it's like you you either going to crash into another car or you're going to like crash into like a like a house where like you might hurt somebody or something I like that, that right That's so That's so i'm just saying like because asking about who dies isn't a moral question well in the trolley problem i think it's like it's supposed to be that if you you just like stumble car across the situation and like if you don't do anything like five people people are going to get run over and the only thing you can do is pull a lever but you're still going to kill one person i feel like that's like the trolley problem what i said yeah i get that I so like, that why can't we imagine being problem in that situation is asking right? it. the fallacy of the oh, trolley problem is asking the, the question yeah but what's the fallacy in that like something like that actually happening to you right like sure there maybe it's no saw from the saw being movies asked to preside over an execution but I don't there know why a it's a fallacy if it that commoners make decisions that in that are uh, that um, horrifying. Right, sure, but like, let's say somebody is like a crazy, evil TV show runner, and they and they actually like set, they actually put you We're in that situation. Not talking about morality anymore. We're talking about evil at that point. You can't use an example. Well, that person, that evil, person, which is that asking commoners is to preside over executions, which is evil. Well, we definitely agree and that that person morality. shouldn't do that, right? Like, morality is not the absence of evil, it's the presence of good. So it's ill-framed to use something evil to justify something good. But like, you're not doing anything, like you haven't done anything evil. This is just a situation that's like been thrust upon you, right? And then you have to just, and then there's like only two options for you at that point, right? And it's like, I mean, it's not your fault that you're, you're in that situation, obviously. I don't think anybody's, you know what I mean? Like, nobody's trying to say that. It's just supposed to be, sometimes you only have bad options, right? Like, I don't see why that's not relevant to, like, moral decision making. That doesn't right? mean morality isn't real, though. So I don't well, see what the point of that what, is. What I'm asking you is, like, is there a right answer in a situation I've like that? I've answered you twice already, so I'm thinking you're just not listening. I said there's no answer. To any moral question grounded in physicality because it's fundamentally a mental property aka suffering but like doing things to other people is presumably bad right like i shouldn't should i you know should i go and steal it's from people and... suffering that is the determinant so if you try to rephrase it so that suffering's not the determinant i'm going to just tell you anything you try to rephrase it where suffering's not the determinant is going to be incoherent that's why well, you're it is, it, you have to go so far in these directions with these presuppositions. No, no, no. that's fine, right? But let's say somebody like denies that there is such a thing as morality at the end of the day. Right. So, like, let's say something like you know, if, if I'm like, if somebody's like Aladdin and they're like starving and they they steal like a loaf of bread and it doesn't harm the person that they took it from very much, we would maybe say that like there's nothing they didn't really do something wrong. Like, let's say, um, or what they did was not terribly wrong, right? Um, okay. versus yeah. like if you're stealing we're drawing lines with acceptability well, you're, you're making just, it a lot more yeah. complicated now i'm just trying to draw like a, a spectrum here so then then there's you know somebody might steal from a person who it really affects like in a harmful manner like they needed that money for something and it's you know what i mean like and it causes them mental distress is that what you're saying like that the level of like harm that's brought to the person mentally is, is what's going to make it bad right what I'm saying is that situations that make it impossible to judge the, to estimate reasonably the amount of suffering caused, aka materially founded. Questions. Well, I'm saying like it can be affected by material I mean, if it's just conditions. a question of, is it one person who dies or five? Mm -hmm. Then it makes sense to estimate everyone has the same capacity for suffering. And it's better to save five than one. That's yes. Yeah, I mean... So but I would say that I would never ask that question of someone because it's evil, because it makes puts people in a position that is completely unrealistic. Well, like what I would say is like they make a choice like that. Uh, no, I agree. It's bad to put somebody in that position. I agree. But the the idea too is that uh, um, you can see why I would think that questions like that are presented by people who are anti morals. Well, sometimes the framing is like this, right? Like, so for certain people, they wouldn't pull the lever because the situation is not like something that they created. And 
they don't have to like become like part of the situation just because they like see that it's there and that if by by pulling the lever like, like they are actively causing somebody to die whereas if they do nothing like they aren't like morally culpable for the situation in any way i get that, I get that. that's why i said it's a model and that's why i said the situation's in underdetermined because it's not modelable because you can always do what you're doing here, which is undermine whatever premise you want to put forward. You're saying you always want to be able to undermine the premise. I'm saying these comically absurd underminings of lengths you need to go to to undermine the premise undermine the undermining in a way. Well, I guess like if you want to construct a different case or something, we, we could do that. Like if you think there are better examples of, or if you think that morality just doesn't have much to do with decision making, right? Like then. Uh, we could talk about what I think emotion uh, is what motivates decision and emotion is connected to morality, but not determinative because people have different levels of realization of morality. So couldn't be determinative. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 okay. Like, let's say there's like just these, like there's these truths, right? Like sort of like metaphysical truths about, you know, um, I, I don't believe in minimizing. Truth. Okay, okay. The the principle that you said about minimizing, uh, like harm, basically. Um, does that have any, uh, like, does that is that just something that people believe in, or is it like something that's outside of people? It's a belief. We could say it's also an epistemological reality, but I would say I'm fine calling it a belief. Because, like, I mean, would you say, like, that the world has this belief in this in the pantheistic sense, or? Well, if that's true, then electrons have feelings. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you think that. You think I think that? Well, I think... Um, like I'm not saying you're a panpsychist in that sense because I think that's more materialistic, right? Um, but if you're a pantheist in the sense that you think like consciousness is a part of the fundamental fabric of like the entire world, right? Like, then it like I think. Do you ever talk about universal consciousness? Isn't that something that you believe in? Because would the universal consciousness have that belief? I guess is my question. If you if you do, but... um. That's down to knowability. You're asking me, do I know God's beliefs? Can I speak on God's beliefs? Well, if that if that and, were like uh, a true, I mean, it doesn't, true like, doesn't make sense for me to put myself in the first person of God because that may not make sense. Well, if it God. were right, let's just say, like in the case that it was, would that count? Was that what counts as a uh, like objective moral fact? Is that if it's if it's something that that consciousness believes, is that like the what qualifies it as? How would that consciousness have a belief? Well, so That's, I'm assuming like the level like, of the, the monism, the universal monism, is not the sky daddy level. Just so you know, there is a level one which yeah. comes into it, but it's not that. I mean, I don't, I don't know, right? Because I don't really wrap my head around it much. Uh, Neither so do I'm I. Just... I just don't mind working with uncertainty. So for me, it's about estimation of prior rods. It's like it's offensive to so, subjective agents to presume that the basis matter has something as complicated as an emotion. So okay, so so with you... that, but yeah, the basic perceptual unit or whatever you can say that's consciousness, and electrons have that property. Hey guys, I just want to interrupt real, real quick. Probably going to go for like maybe three more minutes and then I'm going to open it up to uh, the audience and start letting people come up here and ask questions directly and maybe engage you guys in discussion if that's okay. Yeah, I could do it for a little bit. Um, what's I going to say? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I've been on like many different tracks and I keep kind of like my brain keeps going back and forth between different tracks. So I'm kind of losing where I'm at. But. Um, I think well, we can conclude. Uh, I think it was really an awesome combo and a good start. Uh, I don't think we concluded because I don't. I was just way too complicated to conclude. But uh, now that we've had this chat, we can maybe go in a different direction, or maybe someone else can do a debate. And 
yeah evolve the combo are you guys are you guys just ready to start the audience then or yeah yeah and if anybody has like wants to speak to the arguments that i posted earlier i can like repost them i guess i uh is there does this have i'll put them in stage chat okay um we're gonna start off by uh if anybody has any questions for either of the interlocutors here please raise your hand um if not, if you don't want to speak, feel free to put your question in the main stage chat and tag me. Otherwise, thank you guys for co Okay, I got Full Metal coming up here. What's up, Full Metal? Everyone. It's good weekend. Yeah. Good discussion. I mean, nice and. Did you have a question for either of them? Yeah, I mean, uh, for particularist, uh, I mean, is this a language dependent stance that uh, moral facts are dependent on language, or is that a language independent thing? Because I think both of you guys were talking around it, but we didn't uh, get like, because ultimately, for I would say for moral facts, they need to be independent of true of language, and I would say moral facts and uh, maths are in the same category that they cannot be true independent of how we define them in language so kind of a particular issue but i think there can be some uh meta norms or but yeah we can have a discussion on that but i guess that would be my question like what is your uh, opinion on the uh, language independence of the moral fact you want to go yeah. first Colin? Yeah, I'll take it really quick. Um, I think I have a sort of like language independent view of like facts in general. Um, maybe something like math, I think that I could agree with you that those are going to be um, conceptually driven and and uh, the, the formalism of math is all linguistic, in my opinion, as well. Um, but I think when it comes to normativity uh, and ethics, that it's it's it has much more semantic content to it, um, in the sense that uh, like a proposition is a is a, a bearer of meaning, and it's not the the meaning is not uh, linguistic. So, if I say something like the sky is blue, I could express that proposition uh, in different languages and have the same meaning, right? So, I want to say that I can cognize the meaning of a moral sentence and that that moral sentence could be expressed in different languages and so it's something that's uh non-linguistic non-linguistic um but just in in the case of error theory just false so hey full metal um are you done quantum yeah sorry uh, yeah, thanks for joining. Nice to hear your opinion. Um, not sure I caught the full question, but it seemed to rely on language independent assertions. If Sanskrit yeah. is what the universe is made of, the universe is vibrations, vibrations are in Sanskrit. Can I can mean, never uh, by the proposition that there exists, or we can never establish the position that language independent things exist. I'm not saying I want to take this position. Which is why I try to keep it off language independent, any or language anything, because I don't think we really define or understand language um, specifically enough. We could talk about that. It would be great to go into that, but yeah, we didn't. That wasn't the topic here today. But I do like the idea of going into language uh, questions. No. I hope that explains why I didn't quite get into it. Yeah, I mean, I get that kind of experience because. Um, Quantum, although you are arguing for a particularist position, but you have the language independent stance for for like correspondent uh, correspondence theory of truth, right? Like there is some real uh, uh, reality or uh, there is some like actual. But I would say there is this uh, model imposition that happens at uh, at the language level itself. So there are infinite number of facts in the universe and we are only have access to some information that is coming on to our perceptual sense senses or uh, Markovian blanket if you want to use the the uh, cybernetic sums but uh, but yeah I mean I would say in that uh, framework we cannot uh, have 
I mean, language in a sense is universalized because it's uh, it's used to coordinate between agents, but I don't think language itself can have an ontological status as the uh, base reality or whatever the weird quantum graph uh, that the base reality is. But uh, but as you know, that our minds or our perceptions systems don't have access to the base reality. We we are doing very high level of, uh, I, I mean, obviously like conscious processing, but uh, I would say it's like control mo modeling our attention on uh, particular facts or uh, yeah, whatever we want. And so, yeah, my stance would be sort of uh, based on that, but. Yeah, I actually, I, I like a lot of what you just said. Um... Yeah, so you think that it's a problem for particularism or that it's, uh, that I view it as being extra linguistic or? Yeah, I mean, uh, if I think particularism is fine, but you cannot also go extra linguistic. But if we are defining everything in linguistic, we can have uh, objective, some sort of, uh, in, the, in terms of systems itself, that what the system is maximizing. So uh, there are some principles that we can come that we can have objectively to that so i so on a very relativistic level we can have truth as a metanormative uh, concept that between systems should try to minimize its internal contradictions so suppose there are there are multiple different uh, models that you're making of the world and uh, you have to decide which one to choose but uh, you will always have this uh, if you are models and uh, and you should be Bayesian in your things, so I would say that uh, using the some metanormative things like uh, for imp empirical data, uh, Bayesian reasoning, and for uh, for moral reasoning, some sort of uh, truth and around like minimizing the internal uh, contradictions in a system can uh, can be a sort of uh, I mean, it it would come yeah. down to how you how are defining objective and subjective at that point because since everyone is existing within the language game, so uh, that would make it objective. But yeah, yeah. So I think I understand what you're saying, which is that like uh, they're almost like uh, functional norms, right? Towards how we would approach thinking about moral norms and moral normativity um and yeah so uh, i mean so you might take some example like uh like epistemic um norms right which we might say even some of them might be uh universal right um now when we say that I, again like i think i think you're making like an empirical argument about it uh and you're saying in the cases that we are familiar with that it's, uh, you know, in all these cases, we see the same sort of uh, uh, rational norms being applied to morality, maybe. Um, and, and that's potentially the case. Uh, but at the same time, I like I was saying earlier, I could conceive of like possible subjects who don't share those, right? I mean, so I guess we are at the problem of induction now. So you're basically saying that I cannot, uh, I mean, you're taking the opposite stance that we cannot have a solution to problem of induction, but, um, well, I mean, are you, would you be saying that like induction is some kind of like universal norm that you should favor inductive reasoning or something like that? I, I mean, I think for language to be, uh, it has to be in some sort of way, uh, it has to do that. I, I mean, I would not argue for direct in, in induction. I would argue for some sort of uh, solid number of induction where we are also minimizing the number of assumptions uh, we are making about the system. And it also includes Occam's razor. And uh, I guess one way could be that the, uh, uh, let's not go into that, but yeah, th there are other ways which we can differentiate between norms in itself, because you would argue that the they can be subjective minds which can disagree about it, but I mean that is fine. That uh, subjective minds can disagree about things, but they would still be uh, playing within the same uh, language, right? So yeah, yeah. I mean, I would think like I mean the idea is again it would be sort of um, a hypothetical norm, right? 
that you're having uh, a desire for true beliefs or something like this, or like you want to reason correctly about morality. Um, that premise could be false in the sense that there might not be a, a way of reasoning correctly about morality, right? Um, and but, yeah, you could but, still have that and inform that hypothetically, but. But to be functional, I mean, in a functional sense, we always have to have some sort of model of uh, reality and a way to judge. So I would say that from a decision point of view that this would be a better, uh, it, it would be better that the agents that are acting in the system be, work across some sort of meta normative framework and that. Uh, it might be more advantageous yeah. for like biological organisms if they have like beliefs in uh, categorical norms or something like that, right? Uh, and that could explain why people do believe in them. Um, I don't think that I means that they're there. That was, I think that was very well said. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do appreciate all the input, actually. So. Yeah. Um, hey, Full Metal, you don't mind if we see if any, does anybody else have any? Uh, anybody else want to come up here and ask a question or talk with uh, Quantum and Jen? Does anybody just raise your hand? Just let me know, or if you have a question, please paste it into the main stage chat and at me. Okay. Uh, Euler wants to hop on. Full Metal, thank you for your time. I'll I'll invite you back up if we don't have anybody else to speak and you still want to talk. Yep, sure. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, no, so sorry, uh, What's up, Euler? Do you have any uh, questions for Quantum and Jen? Yeah, I'm not really sure how to formulate it, so I'm just going to try. But earlier you were saying about, like, you know, we could all agree that orgasms are good, and then Quantum's like, well, I can imagine a person who thinks that orgasms don't feel good and doesn't want access to them. But, um, I want to like throw God into this, the equation here, right? Like, you know, we, we all agree that if we drop a ball, like the ball's going to go down to the ground. Uh, and then you could like imagine, or maybe there's like a type of ball that like when you drop it, it like goes up. Um, but, but like if there's like a law of physics making things a certain way, then like, you know, the ball's always going to go down. And you can, you can maybe think that there's like a law of like personality or there's like a law of like humanity you know, if there's like a god to enforce it or something like that, where he can decide that we're all going to feel a certain way if we have access to that information, right? Like, is your position quantum like dependent on like God or not? Um. So, so if it was a god, well, so I could I could take this question in two directions. I think there's 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 doing it with a god, or I mean, I, I would think a god could set up a law of physics, but if if that's the case then let's say you could do it with certain laws of physics that just, um, you know, have sort of consequential entailments that uh, social species are going to develop in certain ways and that they're all going to have the same sorts of experiences with respect to like orgasm or something like that, because that's selected for. The, the thing is, is that like, if you make the evolution based argument, the reason it's selected for is because there are also cases where there is the opposite and that's disadvantageous. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so let, let's say there's a god doing it. Um, in that case, it seems to me that, you know, it's sort of God's opinion, right, <laughs> that that people should desire something and then he enforces it. But it's hard for me to see how, for God, that that would be some stance-independent thing, right? Like, like so, that would be God's stance on it. Now, is is God's stance what? Now, I guess it goes into Euthyphro, right? It's like is is God's stance towards that what it is because it's actually good, or is it just like that's just his opinion, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, how about instead we like remove God as a conscious entity and we have like sort of like a quantum foam that like dictates our personality? What about that? Yeah, so uh, in that sense, if it's if it's actually universal in that there's like a law of physics that prevents a personality of another kind from ever existing, right? Uh, and it's like we're naturalists and we're saying like the nomological is like exhaustive of like all the possibilities. Um, then, yeah, I still would think that even though it has like 
universal applications uh, for all subjects, like to say that they all have the same preferences. Like, this is, let's say if it was about pizza toppings, right? Like, if it was, uh, if if it was just like some law that like anything with taste buds is going to enjoy like pepperoni pizza, right? I don't know that that means that it's like objectively the case that pepperoni pizza tastes good, right? I mean, maybe it is, but that just seems strange to me. Okay, I like the answer. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, man. Yeah. Oh, shit. He, he just left. He dipped. <laughs> he said, I have one question, and then, I oh, there he is. All right. uh, I was just like, <laughs> he left the whole damn show. He was like, I'm out. Uh, so does anybody else have any questions? Just raise your hand. Maybe Strong Atheist wants to prod at Jen on her objective morality stance. I know that's usually something he likes to do. Um, Frank, do you have any questions or coherent to this? Anybody down there? Tofi, do you want to antagonize Quantum? Now's your chance. Get it on video. I can answer. I can talk about what Euler said real quick if people want to decide if they want sure. to come off. Well, sure. That works. It sort of comes back to what I mentioned at the beginning is that uh, it's essentially a matter of belief. It's uh, morality existing depends on a belief about what I'm calling uh, po like uni univalent states. And I didn't say that the orgasm was a univalent positive state. I said, uh, what I meant to say, if, if I indeed si did say that, is that uh, there are univalent positive states, but they can't be described in language. They exist. They can't be described in language. They're like an orgasm. They're not an orgasm. Okay? An orgasm, they're like an orgasm in the sense that most people who aren't looking for a reason to disagree with the physician would say, yeah, that's, a, that's something I want to be able to induce arbitrarily. So so let's say um like let's say uh there's something Just that gives one, me one that one quick thing is that pepperoni does not lend itself to univalence. Real quick. Yeah, okay. so this is what I wanted to ask you, right? Is like that say say like my reading a book put or like listening to a piece of music like really puts me in that sort of state, or like for you like meditation puts you in that state or and so on. And so it would seem that like we're talking about that state and not so much like the things that materially happen that bring it about. Right. I'm saying that your belief in morality, if you don't believe in a univalent positives, that precludes belief in morality. I'm saying that the belief in a univalent positive is a necessity for belief in morality. Or at least, I mean, well, is that just like, is that just like a feeling that people can have, like, about different things? What are you talking about right now? Like... Uh, a posit a, a univalent positive state, I, I would assume, is something that people could uh, they could experience that, but it could be prompted by, by different things, right? Like the way I put it people. to you was, if they had it induced spontaneously, would they want access to it arbitrarily going forward? You don't even believe in the in that. As a possibility, um, and I'm saying that believing in that as necessity is. I, the I mean, look, like if the, the idea is just like morality, if if the idea is that like do people want to like experience like like these sort of positive states, then like yeah, I would I would say like most people have like a sort of common desire to like feel good, whatever that means for them, right? Yeah, and then it's whether some states are univalent. Yeah, so it's like, I don't know if you mean the state of, like... That if the anybody that got them, they'd it. be like, damn, yeah, I want that. I want access to that on command. Anybody would think that. And if they but, it's the same, but it's the same thing for everybody. Like, what... Do you, I, the question is whether you agree with that, and if you don't, all I'm saying, I'm like, I don't care if you do or not, I'm just saying if you don't, I don't think you can really build an argument for morality. As such you're not you're not talking about them all having like it's not like you're saying like well yeah there's a cake that like if i anybody i give this cake to is gonna love it you're saying like the state of like being really like excited and happy or, or like, whatever you want to call the state right like this very positive state of experience right you're like everybody wants that state it's like yes 
I agree, but like what gives people that state is gonna differ between people. So that wouldn't mean that morality didn't exist in my understanding, but Franks, did you have a question? Uh, I kind of had a jokey question. I was going to ask, is the orgasm a moral fact? I would call it more of a biological uh, cycle. Okay. <laughs> and Quantum, I was going to ask you, do you lean towards error theory or uh, is it independent from error, error theory? Uh, I just like I just call myself a moral subjectivist, which is like slightly different, but it's it's related, and I don't really think I'm in like conflict with error theorists. But okay, thanks, guys. He hasn't drank the error theory Kool Aid yet. Is what he's saying. Yeah. He's taking a shot at all error theorists watching this. So if you hear this, that means you have to come debate quantum. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But no. Uh, so guys, I think that unless anybody else has any questions in the audience, I think that we have covered pretty much everything that we need to cover. Um, so if you guys want to wrap up and give like your closing statements and whatnot, and um, we can just move it to a general stage after this if you guys want to. Um, but after the, uh, after the closing statements, I think we should just probably stop recording, by the way, Giz. Uh, but Quantum, if you want to go first, or Jen, do you want to go first? I can go just real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't do a great job as like a debater today because um, I don't think we we're really like that adversarial. But I think we we're kind of exploring concepts. We we're doing conceptual analysis, TM, and uh, and that was fine. And I had a good time. And uh, you know, I still don't think morality is objective. Um, <laughs> uh, if anybody, if if we can, if we end up doing the original debate with order again, that would be cool. Um, but I think Jen did a great job. I think, I think her view again might be a little bit different from the sort of like academic uh, view of moral realism that's like prevalent today. Um, and she might still want to consider herself a form of moral realist, which is fine because these sort of terms, like you know, they have orthodox interpretations for like lengths of time, and then they change. And uh, maybe someday, what people in philosophy are calling moral realism will look totally different than how it looks now. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, I think it was good. So thank you. Yeah. Um, great debate. I, uh, did not want it to be adversarial cause I really just figured the chances of there being a large amount of communication in this debate were low to begin with. And, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I think I learned a few things and my position hasn't changed. I still, <sighs> morality being objective is sort of a definitional thing. There may be a problem. There are sometimes problems just like putting two concepts together. They can self-refute. So whether objective morality self-refutes is itself a definitional question, which is why I have reacted to both the realist and anti-realist positions because this type of debate, I really just like going into the ideas because uh, fundamentally, if, if we agree, what we'll be agreeing on is the limit, first off, is the limitation of language to really convey the essence of the concepts that we're alluding to, but also fruitful progress, hopefully, in the direction of learning and teaching what constitutes a good approach for, I don't know, thinking? approaching various questions i saw a book where they uh, i see that full metal wants to come back up more than welcome to come back up um where they called it i think it was non-realism which is neither realism nor anti-realism so I guess it was a bit of a chance for me to go into some of the subtleties of language, and uh, it was great to do it with someone like Quantum. And I hope I can do it with uh, some other people in the future and that it's not too intimidating to uh, have this type of exchange. Okay. And I thought that he did really well, too. Uh, 
All right. Uh, Full Metal, do you have any like last questions? Yeah, I'm, I mean, regarding the view that the about the limits of language, so I think even there we have uh, in the last century things to consider, right? Like the Gordel's incompleteness theorem and uh, other proofs that gives us um, insight into the limits of the language itself. So uh, itself, so I would say a materialist computationalist view is also kind of converging. Uh, all a synthesis of uh, both uh, this uh, idealist and a uh, materialist position. So, because because it's basically uh, between uh, complete naturalism and complete idealism. How do we reconcile uh, mor- morality across uh, these domains? But yeah, I, I think that is also interesting to explore. Like. How how are we defining uh, what are the limits of language and uh, yeah what are the uh, uh, what 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 do we know about the set of all languages and all formal languages which uh, yeah which can give us insight into uh, yeah that was basically my point but yeah that's it. yeah that might be like a good topic 